hopefully this franchise about the undead can't be killed off. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Hotel Transylvania 2. We gotta teach this kid how to be a monster. Wow. If we get his fangs to come out, Mavis can't leave. Robbie, you okay out there? <laughs> He's fine. He's blobby. Okay, Murray, show him how to be scary. Oh, me no crutun tap. We come on. my back. Oh. For real. Fellow vampire Count Von Count would say that Sony Animation has three franchises. Ha ha ha. Or is that just one? The math is perhaps a little trickier than Sesame Street level. Sony Animation started out with Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, then added the Smurfs, followed by Hotel Transylvania. And these three movies were big enough hits to suddenly make Sony Animation a genuine competitor, with Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, Illumination Entertainment, and the like. But then, well, 2013 was a bad year. Cloudy directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller had become live-action famous thanks to 21 Jump Street, leaving another duo to direct the Cloudy sequel. And while Cloudy 2 performed on par with the first movie, Lord and Miller <gasps> went over to Warner Brothers Animation for the Lego Movie, which was a huge success. So it seems they won't be able to return to Sony Animation even to exec produce a third movie like they did with Cloudy 2. Then also in 2013, the Smurfs 2 hit theaters and only brought in half the box office of the first smash hit. In fact, that first movie brought in so much money, Sony Animation isn't willing to give up on the little guys, and are currently in the process of reinventing the franchise. A process that must be as tricky as catching a Smurf, because the release date keeps getting pushed back. Right now, Get Smurfy is set for 2017. So that leaves just Hotel Transylvania on solid footing, or is it? While the first Hotel Transylvania was a big hit, it was released at just the beginning of Adam Sandler's career implosion. If the Drac Pack wants to really show young Dennis something truly terrifying, they should let him take a gander on how the general public turned on Sandler's pixels like a zombie going after brains. Talk about torches and pitchforks, it would seem most moviegoers want Sandler's career dead. Will he be able to hide behind animation? Or will those same moviegoers still sniff him out? So, can Sandler, who's had a long relationship with Sony, at least still deliver for their animation department? Or does the studio need to have a Sandler exorcism? Blah, 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 blah! What a cute movie! But not as good as the first one. The last third, though, the last third is pretty darn awesome. In fact, it's so good that it made me angry that they wasted so much time with the first two thirds of the movie. I was like, come on, you guys are supposed to be professionals. How on earth could it take you so long to warm up? And you know, to be fair, sometimes Adam Sandler is rightfully accused of not being as professional as he should be. But Gendy Tartakovsky, come on, man. Don't let Adam Sandler rub off on you. I guess it really came across as maybe that the film had been rushed together at the last minute, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But the craftsmanship of the first film wasn't quite there. What was so good about the last third? Well, I don't want to give anything away, but it had all the spooky Halloween atmosphere and character development that we enjoyed so much in that first movie. And it also had genuine danger, which I loved. I relished the genuine danger in the last third of the film, which again is something that made the first movie stand out and be unique. However, the first two thirds of the movie, to borrow from the film itself, are childproofed, and they play more like a Halloween version of grown-ups uh, than a, a modern-day Adams Family, which is where I think uh, Hotel Transylvania really clicks as a franchise. Uh, the first two-thirds, basically, besides a lack of focus and professionalism and craftsmanship, I'm making it sound worse than it is, uh, it's just too rushed. There's just too much that they want to do. There's a lot of fan service there. They insist on showing the wedding for um, Mavis and Johnny, which I guess I understand, and I think a lot of fans will go crazy when they see Mavis's spiderweb veil, but still, I just think there wasn't uh, room enough in the movie for it, and it wasn't necessary. I mean, maybe they didn't want Mavis and Johnny to have a baby without being married, but they could have done like an animated, you know, short in between the films, or just shown like a wedding photo, or done an opening credit sequence, which had, you know, which was the wedding on Fast Forward. I don't know. There are lots of options they could have gone with. The one they went with didn't quite work. Uh, but nevertheless, despite these problems, uh, there are a lot of good things 
uh, introduced to the franchise. And I really left the theater wanting a Hotel Transylvania 3 because I loved the last third so much. Uh, I really liked um, the little kid, Denisovich. He was adorable, very well voiced, really well animated. There's a twist at the end with him, which made me laugh out loud in the theater. I thought it was awesome. Great character design is all I'll say. Uh, and then also, I really liked great vampire Vlad. He's what brought the genuine danger, and he also heightened a lot of the visual choices that were being made, which I really appreciated. Uh, basically, I guess the, the best way to describe is that in the first movie, uh, I don't know if you recall this, but they had uh, a, a sequence where, you know, Dracula and Johnny still were like not getting along that well, and they decided to have a flying table uh, like competition in the banquet hall. And that scene is where I fell in love with the first movie, because it's where I realized it was something special, that it was a cut above most animated fare. Uh, it was a little bit more sophisticated than usual, uh, and also very genre -y. I just really appreciated that the movie went for it and took its time. But there isn't any sequence like that, even in the final third, because they have so much ground to make up in the sequel. And I hope that when they make a Hotel Transylvania 3, they'll go back to that and they'll take their time and they just won't be so rushed. And I think the main culprits here, uh, besides uh, Tartakovsky and Sandler, are, uh, you know, Adam Sandler's entourage. I think just like they hold him back in his live action movies, they hold him back in his animation work. And I know that they're his friends and for many of them, he is their sole source of employment, but it's just not working out. And I think, you know, the movie really takes to the skies when he's allowed to just focus on his work with his, you know, actual, you know, legitimate family members. Uh, and I think that Sandler maybe should, you know, bring it home, you know, with his work in general and just at least, at least give the entourage a break for a little bit. So should you see Hotel Transylvania 2? Well, if you are a fan of the first movie, yes, there's a lot to like here and you won't want to miss it. Uh, if you're looking to do something for the Halloween season, I think this is a solid entry. There's some, there's some good atmosphere. Again, that last third is very good and you can at least go and see it as a matinee. And also, if you have kids, kids really seem to like the movie, but I will tell you, there is no need to see it in 3D. I don't think they really do anything with the 3D. I don't think there's a lot of depth of field even. And I just, you know, like the first film, it helped create the atmosphere, but I don't, I don't think it's worth the money, um, you know, if there's a showing available to you. Sometimes they kind of cheat these days and don't make 2D showings available when you want to go, but if there is a 2D showing readily, readily available, I would go. Now, before I sign out, there's just a little public service announcement I would like to make. Uh, I know that the first two thirds of this movie have their problems, and they might not be that engaging for those who are uh, not in school anymore, <laughs> like, uh, you know, like middle school or below. However, that doesn't mean you should be dismissive of the movie, and I'll tell you why. I was sitting next to a family, or at least a mother with some kids, and while the kids were really enjoying the movie, as were most of the kids in the audience, this mom decided to go to town on her cell phone. She's like, this is how I'm gonna entertain myself for the next hour and a half. And I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> I was much more polite than that, and she was very polite to her credit. Uh, once I said, could you please put your phone away, uh, she did. But I was thinking about it and I thought, what kind of message does that send to her kids, right? Because I'm sure they're at school most of the day uh, and they were really looking forward to this, I'm sure. So if you can't even pay attention to something your kid likes for an hour and a half, and that light is intrusive, like it bothered me and I'm sure it probably bothered her kids, but her kids are like, I can't say anything to my mom about that. I mean, maybe some, some you know, kids can to their mom. I would always have been very polite and just said, that light's bothering me, uh, but you know, in my mom's defense, I don't think she would ever have done anything like that because I, I think she was always interested in what I was interested in. So if you do take some kids to see this movie, uh, I just, you know, don't make it crummy for them. And I think, you know, in your defense, it might not even occur to you. You might not realize that, but just think about it from there. And also from your perspective, if you're really excited about something and you take people or someone agrees to go with you, when you feel kind of crummy, if they spent the whole time on their phone and not paying attention and distracting you from it, right? I mean, it just kind of detracts from the event. So it's an hour and a half, you know, kids are only kids for a limited amount of time, uh, make a little party out of it. And again, it's not that bad. So that's my review of Hotel Transylvania 2. I hope there's a Hotel Transylvania 3, and I hope that they uh, get back on track a little bit more solidly than they did with this one. All right, so write your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning into my review. I look forward to continuing the conversation down below, and you can check out some other episodes right now. 